On the 9th of April, 1940, Germany conquered Denmark in six hours. Because of this, and also because of the fact that the Danes were viewed favorably according to the Nazi race views, Denmark suffered a mild occupation initially. Some Danish men came forward. They wanted to fight for Germany. And most of these men fought in the Danish Free Corps. In this video, you are going to learn more about Danish Waffen SS volunteers. Keep watching. Hey, good to have you back on the channel. And if you're new, I'm Stefan. I'm a Dutch history teacher. I'm Dutch, not Danish. And I make videos about history for you. And if you find it interesting, then please consider subscribing. Also hit that notification bell. After World War I, Denmark gained a little piece of Schleswig back from Germany. And I say back because in 1864, the second Schleswig war took place between Denmark and Prussia. Denmark lost and therefore surrendered control over Schleswig-Holstein to Prussia. As tensions in Europe rose during the 1930s with Adolf Hitler's rise to power, Denmark proclaimed itself neutral. And when Hitler offered Denmark a non-aggression pact, the Danish government willingly accepted this. But as we know from history, non-aggression pacts with the Germans aren't worth that much. Because on the 9th of April 1940, Germany invaded Denmark and conquered the country within six hours. Also Norway was attacked. The quick Danish surrender as well as the fact that the Danes were viewed favorably in the Nazi race views resulted in a fairly mild occupation initially. What did this occupation look like? Well officially the Danish government remained intact. So therefore the Danish government wasn't overthrown and had room for maneuver. However, the Germans had some demands. Denmark had to conform economically and politically to the German hegemony and deliver industrial and agricultural goods to Germany. The Danish experience of German occupation was unique in Europe, leaving negotiations between the two countries in the hands of the representative foreign ministries. In order for this to work, Copenhagen, albeit under protest, temporarily accepted German protection from the British and was left to govern it itself, while Berlin officially acknowledged Denmark's independence and neutrality. So the Germans could make it look like Denmark had voluntarily chosen the German side. This didn't mean that Denmark had to deliver troops for the German war effort. On the 22nd of June 1941, Germany invaded the USSR. So how did the Danish government react to this invasion? All parties in the governing coalition, including the Social Democrats, agreed that Bolshevism needed to be fought. Denmark didn't have that much negative experience with communism. I mean, not as bad as Finland, for example. But still, many people were anti-communist. And did you know that the Danish Communist Party was actually allowed to operate legally till August 1941? Oh, I have to say that just right after Operation Barbarossa kicked off, 22nd of June 1941, Danish communists were interned. And also Denmark severed diplomatic ties with Moscow. They signed the anti comintern Pact. Officially, the Danish government supported the German campaign and the Danes set up a commission to support Danish colonizers for the East. And then there were Danish volunteers for the Waffen SS. During the war, 12,000 Danish men came forward, of which 6,000 were admitted. Most of these joined the Free Corps Denmark, but these were not the first. On April 20th, 1940, some weeks after the German attack on Denmark was completed, Hitler gave Himmler permission to recruit Scandinavian volunteers for a new regiment named Nordland, both from Norway and Denmark. Nordland was part of the larger Viking division. Also Dutch volunteers served in the Viking division in Regiment Westland. Recruitment of Danes was facilitated by the National Socialist Workers Party of Denmark. A few hundred Danes volunteered. The following year, one week after Operation Barbarossa had started, the Free Corps Denmark was established, an all motorized Danish battalion. Now important was for the Danish government that the Danes that would serve in this army formation had to be volunteers. 
since the Danish government didn't want to forsake its neutrality or be seen as a co-belligerent or an ally of the Nazis, therefore risking war with the Allies. What were the reasons for Danish men to fight on the Eastern Front? Well, as said before, anti-communist and pro-Nazi sympathies were of an influence. An estimated 75% were ideologically motivated, either being part of the Danish Nazi party, half of them, or held Nazi sympathies. Others joined because of unemployment, which drove them for work to Germany, where they were recruited. A unique reason to join prevalent among former officers of the Danish army was the fact that Denmark had been defeated within six hours on the 9th of April 1940. By joining the fight in the USSR, they kind of wanted to make up for that. Which is kind of ironic because they were fighting next to and wearing the uniform of those who had invaded them. Another important factor we should definitely not overlook is the fact that 25% of the Danish volunteers basically belong to the German minority in northern Schleswig and therefore were driven by feelings of patriotic duty. Christian Peter Krissing was appointed as commander of this Danish legion. Now, he was not an ardent Nazi, he was more of a conservative nationalist, but he was fierce anti-communist. In July 1941, Danish volunteers, they were shipped to Germany and there they were made to swear an oath to Hitler and this was a huge problem. Also because of the fact that these volunteers were handed out German Waffen-SS uniforms and not Danish uniforms as was promised. As for the uniform, there existed a Danish black patch. This was briefly worn on the collar. Later, it appeared on the left sleeve in different forms. Below the flag patch, there was a cuff band with the text Freikorps Denmark. Later, the Danish Free Corps was sent to German-occupied Poland for training. There, Christing was relieved of his command and the pro-Nazi Christian Friedrich von Schalburg took his place. With von Schalburg as commander, the Danes were sent to the Eastern Front and they were dropped by planes in the Demyansk pocket in May 1942. There, they fought for several weeks against the Red Army. The next month, June 1942, von Schalburg, he initiated the first offensive of the Free Corps Denmark. Von Schalburg, he wanted to see the battle up close and as he was moving towards the front line, he stepped on a landmine and was gravely injured. Moments later, a Soviet artillery shell finished him off. Later in the war, the Schalburg Corps was established to honor his name, um, which basically served as a formation for ex-free corps Danes who wanted to join the German side. This formation was stationed in Denmark and part of the Germanic SS and the Schalburg Corps built up a fearful reputation. Okay, back to Damiansk. For several weeks, the Danes kept fighting against the Soviet armies in intense battles. Then they were withdrawn and saw action again between December 1942 and March 1943 at Velikia Luki, south of Demyansk. In June 1943, the Danish Legion was dissolved. The Danish units were transferred to a new Nordland division as Regiment 24 Denmark. In the autumn of 1943, they fought partisans in Croatia and in the winter, they were back on the Eastern Front at the Oranienbaum pocket, later at Narva and lastly at Berlin. It is assumed that the Danes took part in crimes against civilians in both Croatia and Belarus, but there is little direct evidence. An estimated 2,000 Danish volunteers were either killed in action or disappeared in the Soviet POW camp. After the war, the former Danish Waffen-SS volunteers, they were accused of treason to the homeland and most of them served sentences of two years each. Around 3,300 were convicted. Officers received harder sentences. Kriesing was sentenced to four years in prison, while its later commander, Knut Berger Martensen, was executed in 1949 for crimes committed in the notorious Schalburg formation in Denmark during the German occupation. After the Second World War, the era of the Cold War began. 
and many of the former volunteers, they believed that they had fought on the right side because they had already fought against communism. Big shout out to my patrons. Philip Jordan, Jakob Musland, Nick Taranova, Haley Bear, Mark Little Hill, Janusz Jankiewicz, Joan Kekoa, Justin Trebel, Peter King, Tanya Dixie, Henry Clarkson, Rob Park, Andrea Martic, and Fernando Lopez Ojeda. And another big shout out to Jacob Musland. He is a patron of mine. He supported me. And if you support $25 or more, you can request your own episode. And that's what Jacob did. So Jacob, I hope you liked this episode. Please let me know what you thought of it. If you'd like to know about other Pro Access Formations, I have a playlist for you here. And you know, if you're Scandinavian and you want to learn more about the Norwegian Legion, well, I got you covered. It's right here. Or thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Check me out on Patreon because with your donations, I can keep doing this and expand. Thanks for watching. Until next time.